Hello everyone. In this session, we'll be learning about the lungs and the heart. Okay. In this session, I'll be also showing the 3D models of lungs and the heart. So stay tuned till the end of this particular session. So lungs, I'll be covering in these headings. I'll cover the external features of the lung, then side determination of the lung, and various relations of the lung, and structures at the hilum of the lung. Then lastly, we'll cover about the bronchopulmonary segments and its applied anatomy. And in heart, I'll cover the exterior of the heart, interior of the heart, the coronary circulation, as well as the applied anatomy of the heart. Okay. So in all, we'll be covering the lungs and the heart. So let's begin with the external features of the lung. For that, let's uh, directly go to the 3D model which we have. So here we can see the specimen of the right lung. So what are the external features in the right lung? Here we can see the upper part. This is the apex of the lung. The lower broad part is referred to as the base of the lung. And it has borders and surfaces. This anterior border is the sharp anterior border. And this part is the broad posterior border. And there are two surfaces. This surface is the costal surface. And this surface is the medial surface. Okay. Medial surface further subdivided into a mediastinal surface and a vertebral surface. Okay. And uh, with this basic idea, uh, we should be able to determine the side of the lung. How to determine that this lung is of right side and not of the left side. So for determining the side of the lung, we, we will have to justify in three dimensions. Just like we determine side for the bones by saying three dimensions. Similarly for organs also we will have to say. So for superior and inferior, the point which we can say is the apex of the lung is on the superior aspect. For medial and lateral, we can say the hilum of the lung is on the medial aspect. Okay, this region of the lung that is the hilum of the lung, this should be on the medial aspect. And anterior and posterior, this is the most important critical point for side determination of the lung. The anterior part is the, this, this border as we can see, this is the sharp anterior border. Okay. And the border which is on the posterior aspect, this is the broad posterior border. Okay. And never say that this lung has three lobes. That's why this is of the right side. Okay. Because there may be variations in the lobes of the lung. So that's why that point should be avoided. Okay. Always justify side by justifying three dimensions. So this is the lung of the right side. anterior border posterior border as well as there is an inferior border here inferior border separates the costal surface as well as the medial surface from the base of the lung okay this region is the base of the lung so this oval border this is the inferior border of the lung okay so three borders and three surfaces we can remember anterior posterior and inferior border surfaces are costal surface medial surface and the uh, base also referred to as the diaphragmatic surface okay because this region is related with the diaphragm and this region here is related with the ribs as well as the intercostal muscles right and uh, for the medial surface we'll see the relations in a different image uh, before that first let's look at the left lung as well so here we can see the specimen of the left lung so again try to justify the side of this left lung so we can say that it has got a sharp anterior border here the apex is pointed towards the upper aspect and this is the hilum facing on the medial aspect okay that's why this is the lung of the left side okay and it also has similar borders and surfaces as that of the right lung to understand the various uh, relations of the medial surface let's look at different image so here we can see uh, this is the right sided mediastinum which is seen the right lung has been removed imagine as if the right lung is removed the right lung was here right so imagine as if it is removed this is the anterior border of the lung so this will be in this region okay imagine you have just removed the right lung and we are waving the medial surface of the right lung okay and similar cadaveric image is shown on the right side so what all structures we can see in this region so automatically that will form the relations of the medial surface of the right lung okay 
and we should be able to like uh, approximately show the locations of those structures in the specimen of the lung okay so what all structures we can extrapolate from this image this we can see this is the heart right so which part of the heart is this this region is the right atrium of the heart okay so the right atrium of the heart is related in this region okay and as we know uh, in the right atrium there is opening of the superior vena cava as well as the inferior vena cava so svc ivc so small parts of uh, ivc and svc are related here and there is a vein draining into the superior vena cava that is the azygous vein okay so azygous vein is related along the medial surface and apart from that we can see trachea and esophagus okay so these two tubes are also related in this region trachea and esophagus so anterior aspect there will be trachea posterior aspect esophagus okay and we can see certain nerves which are related here this is the phrenic nerve here so on the anterior aspect there is phrenic nerve and on the posterior aspect near the esophagus there is vagus nerve okay so two nerves which we can remember is the phrenic nerve and vagus nerve okay so phrenic nerve on the anterior aspect vagus nerve on the posterior aspect so all these structures uh, we should be able to show approximately in the dissected specimen of the lung so in this region there will be right atrium then in the upper part superior vena cava inferior vena cava okay trachea esophagus phrenic nerve vagus nerve so at least these structures we should be able to locate on the specimen of the lung okay similarly let's look at the left lung so now imagine as if we are viewing the left sided mediastinum so the left lung was in this region we have removed the left lung this anterior border of the lung so it will be located here so imagine we have, we have just deflected the left lung from this region so whatever structures are seen here will be related on the mediastinal surface of the left lung okay so which part of the heart will be this we are viewing the mediastinum from the left side this is the left ventricle right so left ventricle we can see the impression of the left ventricle here and from the left ventricle we know the ascending aorta arises right which continues as the arch of aorta and continues as the descending thoracic aorta okay so so this ascending aorta arch and the descending aorta so all these are related here we can see here ascending arch and then the descending aorta okay and trachea and esophagus they both are also related here and also the nerves which we saw in the right lung phrenic nerve vagus nerve those will also be related here and apart from that uh, left recurrent laryngeal nerve is also related okay so for the heart we should remember that left ventricle is related with the left lung right atrium is related with the right lung okay so similar things we should be able to show in the dissected specimen of the lung we can see the left sided mediastinal surface we can see a clear cut depression here u shaped inverted u shaped depression this is the arch of aorta and the descending thoracic aorta okay impression for arch and the descending thoracic aorta and esophagus trachea left ventricle this is the region of the left ventricle okay and when we see the anterior border of the left lung it will show a projection in the lower aspect that projection is referred to as the lingula of the left lung okay it is characteristic only for the left lung because of the presence of the heart there is an extension from the left side of the lung that is the lingula of the lung okay so this was all about the uh, structures in the mediastinal relations of the lung now let's understand these two terms root of the lung and hilum of the lung so what what is the difference between these two terms root is the structures which enter or leave the lung okay and hilum is the site on the lung in which these structures enter or exit okay i'll just clarify it with these descriptions root includes the structures and hilum is the site of entry and exit okay so in this image various structures are shown here so this is the these structures are the root of the lung okay and in this image only the site on the lung is seen where these structures are entering or exiting so this is the hilum of the lung okay so this difference one should know 
and we should also know that which structures are related in the hilum of the right lung and left lung. So let's see the arrangement of structures of the root of the lung which enters into the hilum. So for the right sided hilum, anterior to, anterior to posterior in general we can remember as vein, artery and bronchus. Okay, in both sides there is the right sided hilum we are seeing and there is the left sided hilum again we can remember as vein artery and bronchus v a b we can remember from anterior to posterior so here is the superior pulmonary vein then the artery and on the posterior aspect there is bronchus in the right lung there is eap arterial as well as hyp arterial bronchus in the left lung there is only one single left principal bronchus okay and when we trace the lower aspect of the hilum there is a vein inferior pulmonary vein Okay, inferior pulmonary vein, it is just adjacent to a structure called as pulmonary ligament. It is the site where the parietal pleura and the visceral pleura meet and it extends downwards that is the pulmonary ligament. Okay, it provides a blind space for this inferior pulmonary vein to expand during increased venous return. Okay, so to determine the structures in the hilum of the lung, from the anterior most aspect, the, the first structure that we encounter is the superior pulmonary vein and the structure which we see on the inferior most aspect is also a vein, inferior pulmonary vein okay? and the posterior most structure is the bronchus. That is how we can easily identify. Let us try to identify in one of the hilum. Let us try to identify the structures in this hilum of the left lung. So, here we can see the anterior most structure which we can say this is the left superior pulmonary vein and the inferior most structure here there is also the left inferior pulmonary vein okay so two veins we can see here then in the middle part here this is the artery this is the left pulmonary artery and the posterior most structure here we can see this is the left main bronchus okay and in, if it is a right lung so it will have a bronchus above the pulmonary artery as well okay so that that's why it is called as e arterial bronchus and high arterial bronchus okay so that's how we should be able to identify the various structures in the hilum of the lung and in books bronchial arteries may be written in the hilum so but you won't be able to spot it out because bronchial arteries are the arteries with which supply the wall of the bronchus okay so those will be very thin so that cannot be identified as a big structure okay so by mistake don't try to identify a big structure as a bronchial artery okay this point you should remember now let's cover the bronchopulmonary segments in the lung it is the most important topic in the lung uh, it is most frequently as asked as a short note so uh, everyone should be clear with this topic so here we can see multiple bronchopulmonary segments let's try to understand it so what are bronchopulmonary segment its all characteristic features are important it is a subdivision of the lobe of the lung it is pyramidal in shape with its apex directed towards the hilum and base is towards the surface of the lung. Okay, it's a wedge-shaped structure like this, apex towards the hilum, base towards the outer surface of the lung. Okay. It is surrounded by connective tissue. It is aerated by a segmental or a tertiary bronchus. This is very important. As we know, there is a trachea which divides into the right main bronchus and the left main bronchus, right? The right bronchus divides into a lobar bronchus. In the right lung, there are three lobes, right? So there will be three lobar bronchus, and each lobar bronchus, when it further divides, so that division is referred to as segmental bronchus. Okay, for each of the bronchopulmonary segments. So it is aerated by a segmental or a tertiary bronchus. Okay, never write terminal bronchus. In in place of the tertiary bronchus okay because these are two different things so this the word tertiary is very important tertiary or you can simply say that it is a segmental bronchus okay each segment has, has its own artery it's a branch of the pulmonary artery and it has an own lymphatic drainage okay but veins are intersegmental okay veins carry oxygenated blood in lungs so that's why it is shown in red color so veins are actually intersegmental Okay, and the blue colored which is shown here, it is actually the branch of the pulmonary artery. Okay, 
So in bronchopulmonary segment, veins are intersegmental. So these are well-defined anatomical, functional and surgical units of the lung. So it can be surgically resected. Okay. Now let's try to label the bronchopulmonary segments of each lung. So each lung has got 10 bronchopulmonary segments. Okay. So this is the segment 1, apical, then posterior, anterior, segment 2, 3, then medial, lateral, then 6 is apical, basal, then 8, 9, 10. Number 7 is not seen here, that is on the medial aspect. Okay, so to show the number 7, you will have to draw the medial surface of the lung and show a segment just in front of the hilum. So, this is the bronchopulmonary segments of the right lung and this is the bronchopulmonary segments of the left lung. In this, instead of medial and lateral, there is superior lingular and inferior lingular. Okay, that is one difference as compared to that of the right lung. Okay, so it looks uh, very difficult to remember the names. So, let us try to simplify it. How to remember these bronchopulmonary segments? You can easily remember by remember by this mnemonic A palm and A map, okay, where A refers to the apical. So these numbers also correspond to the names of the lobes. Okay. So this is the apical, then posterior, anterior, then 4 is lateral, 5 is medial, then apical basal, medial basal, anterior basal. This is the apical. So this is the apical basal. Medial basal is on the medial aspect. This is anterior basal, lateral basal and posterior basal. Okay. And for the left lung, just replace 4 and 5 by superior lingular and inferior lingular. Okay. So lateral and medial, if you can just replace it by superior lingular and inferior lingular, other segments are same for the left lung okay so that's how easily we can remember and just try to uh, draw the diagram according to the lobes okay in the right lung there are three lobes right so this is one oblique fissure then there is a horizontal fissure four and five are in the middle lobe in the left lung, this region four and five is replaced by superior lingular and inferior lingular okay and in applied anatomy of the bronchopulmonary segments, aspiration pneumonia uh, in supine position it is more common due to prolonged bedridden patients. And segment 6 is the most vulnerable, the apical basal segment. So abscess formation occurs most, more frequently here. And because of the bronchopulmonary segment, certain diseases can get localized to one particular segment. For example, bronchiectasis. It gets localized to one segment and if a disease is localized then segmental resection of the lung can be done okay for example if disease is only in segment 3 so only this part of the lung can be resected out okay because it is a surgical unit of the lung so that's the applied anatomy of bronchopulmonary segments okay now let's start with the heart so here we can see the specimen of the heart. Let's have a brief overview with the images and then I'll show you the 3D models of the heart as well. So here we can see the exterior of the heart viewed from the anterior aspect and this image shows the exterior of the heart viewed from the posterior aspect. Details about the borders and surfaces will cover in the 3D model. And uh, in this image we can see the interior of the heart so interior of various chambers are shown here this is the interior of the right atrium this image shows the interior of the right ventricle this image shows the interior of the left ventricle and this image shows the interior of the left atrium okay so all four chambers interior will be covering and while studying the interior few basic rules we have to remember so these are the rules which we need to remember while describing the interior of the heart. Each chamber shows rough part and smooth part. Okay. The right atrium shows rough anterior part and smooth posterior part. Both ventricles show rough inflowing part and smooth outflowing part. And left atrium it is entirely smooth except the region of the left auricle. Okay. So whenever we are describing a particular chamber we should remember that 
it will have some rough part and some smooth part okay that's how we can begin the description of that particular chamber so this is the basic rule we can remember so with this basic idea let's look at the 3d models of the heart so here we can see the actual dissected specimen of the heart so uh, while describing the heart in general we can say that it has four chambers the two atrium and the two ventricles and between the atrium and the ventricle there is atrioventricular groove in between the ventricles there is interventricular groove on the anterior aspect as well as the posterior aspect and there is also an interatrial groove okay and uh, let's learn about the borders and surfaces of the heart so the surface which is seen on the anterior aspect this is the sternocostal surface in relation with the sternum as well as the costal cartilages right so this is the sternocostal surface in the part of the heart which is seen flat here which is resting on the diaphragm this surface is the diaphragmatic surface of the heart and the surface which is on the left side that is referred to as the left surface of the heart okay and the apex and the base if we see this pointed part this is the apex of the heart directed towards the left and diagonally opposite the apex this region formed by both the atrium this is the base of the heart okay base of the heart is formed mainly by the left atrium okay it's formed by both the atrium but majority is formed by the left atrium okay so apex base and surfaces we have covered now let's cover the borders of the heart extending from the superior vena cava to the inferior vena cava there is the right border of the heart it separates the sternocostal surface from the base of the heart okay and extending from the inferior vena cava up to the apex of the heart this border here this is the inferior border of the heart it separates the sternocostal surface from the diaphragmatic surface okay and extending from the apex of the heart to the left auricle there is left border of the heart okay so the left border of the heart separates sternocostal surface from the left surface okay and there is also an upper border of the heart which is actually obscured by this great vessels pulmonary trunk and aorta okay so these three borders at least we can remember the right border separating sternocostal surface from the base of the heart inferior border separating sternocostal surface from the diaphragmatic surface and left border separating sternocostal surface from the left surface okay so each border is separating sternocostal surface from one other surface okay in general you can remember this so this was about the external features of the heart and also we can see the coronary arteries here this is the right coronary artery this is a branch from the left coronary artery the anterior interventricular artery and the artery which is seen here that is the left coronary artery that's a branch of left coronary called as the left circumflex artery details of branches we'll see and on the posterior aspect near the posterior interventricular groove that is posterior interventricular artery let's see the interior of the heart as well in this specimen we can see the structures of the interior of the heart so here we can see this chamber of the heart is the right atrium this chamber is the right ventricle this cut part here this is the left ventricle and this chamber here this is the left atrium okay let's see this region this is the interior of the right atrium so what all structures are seen in the interior of the right atrium it shows rough anterior part and smooth posterior part right so if we just reflect this we can see some roughness here so if we just reflect it in its anatomical position this is actually the rough anterior part okay rough anterior part is formed by this crista terminalis and musculi pectinati okay transverse muscle ridges which we can see this is the musculi pectinati and this is the crista terminalis and behind which there is smooth posterior part smooth posterior part shows an oval depression that is called as the fossa ovalis and there is a margin covering it that is referred to as the limbus fossa ovalis okay and there is an opening of a vein 
uh, inside the right atrium that is the opening of coronary sinus and the two major veins also open here the superior vena cava and the inferior vena cava okay and the largest opening seen here is the right atrioventricular orifice so all these are the openings in the interior of the right atrium and uh, the location of the uh, conducting system of the heart the sa node is located near the upper part of the crista terminalis near the superior vena cava and ab node is located in a region which is called as triangle of cox it is formed by the septal cusp of the tricuspid valve then opening of the coronary sinus and there is an elevated sub endocardial ridge here so these three structures form the boundaries of the triangle of cox and the ab node is located there okay so this was about the interior of the right atrium let's see the interior of the right ventricle right ventricle shows rough inflowing part and smooth outflowing part okay so this is the rough inflowing part and both this part are separated by an elevated uh, crest which is called as supraventricular crest okay and the rough inflowing part it is described as trabeculae carnae trabeculae carnae includes ridges bridges and papillary muscles okay ridges are fixed elevations on the surface of the ventricle bridges are fixed at two ends and three in between and pillars are the papillary muscles okay this tall structures which we can say this is the papillary muscles okay papillary muscles at the apex here there is caudate end in a which go towards the cusps and we, here we can see this one example of a bridge this is referred to as the septo marginal trabeculae which carries the right branch of the av bundle okay and supraventricular crest that we discussed that is the example of a ridge in smooth outflowing part this region is referred to as the infundibulum of the right ventricle okay in left ventricle also similar things are there Uh, one difference that we can see is of the papillary muscle in right ventricle there are three papillary muscles anterior posterior and septal in left ventricle there is only a, uh, only two papillary muscles okay in left ventricle also there is rough inflowing part smooth outflowing part rough inflowing part is also called as trabeculae carnae okay similar to that of the right ventricle and the outflowing part here i told you it is infundibulum of the right ventricle on the left ventricle it is called as vestibule of the left ventricle okay and let's see the interior of the left atrium you can see it is entirely smooth except in this region we can see some roughness so that roughness is caused by this re this part that's the left auricle okay so this is the left atrium So this was all about the interior of the chambers of the heart. Now let's continue with the coronary arteries. In this image also we can see the coronary arteries. This is the right coronary artery arising from the aorta here, and this is the left coronary artery. It is soon dividing into anterior interventricular artery and left circumflex artery. Okay, this is the left circumflex artery. here we can see the major branches of the right coronary artery and left coronary artery from the right coronary artery there is right marginal artery here we can see this blood vessel this one this is the right marginal artery then posterior interventricular artery on the posterior aspect and sa nodal artery okay these are the main branches of the right coronary artery the left coronary artery we can see this branch this is the left anterior descending artery also called as anterior interventricular artery then a branch which goes behind along the atrioventricular groove on the left side that is circumflex artery and diagonal artery it is corresponding to the marginal artery of the right side okay here we can see right marginal artery similar artery if seen on the left side it is labeled as diagonal artery okay so so these are the vessels which, which supply the heart origin of these vessels are important the right coronary artery arises from the anterior aortic sinus left coronary artery arises from the left posterior aortic sinus okay 
right posterior aortic sinus is also referred to as non coronary sinus it produces a bulge in the interior of the right atrium that bulge is re referred to as torus aorticus okay in this image we can see both the atrium are removed and we can see the valves of the heart this is the pulmonary valve aortic valve tricuspid valve and bicuspid valve the mitral valve okay on also we can see the origin of the coronary arteries this is the right coronary artery anterior aortic sinus is here and left posterior aortic sinus is here this is the left coronary artery we can see it dividing into left anterior descending and this is the left circumflex artery okay and this is the non coronary sinus let's see the venous drainage of the heart so venous drainage the largest vein which drain the heart is this coronary sinus okay svc and ivc are also veins large veins here but they don't drain the heart they drain the body okay so when we speak about veins draining the heart the largest vein draining the heart is this coronary sinus and there are many other vessels which open into the coronary sinus and coronary sinus ultimately opens into the right atrium okay and anterior cardiac veins they directly open into the right atrium okay they don't go into the coronary sinus okay so which other veins are opening into the coronary sinus here we can see the right marginal vein then left marginal vein then middle cardiac vein is on the posterior aspect dotted thing which we can see this is on the posterior aspect and on the anterior aspect here this is great cardiac vein okay so great cardiac vein on the anterior aspect middle cardiac vein on the posterior aspect there is also small cardiac vein here small cardiac vein then marginal veins are there right left then there is an oblique vein called as oblique vein of marshall also there is one more vein which is not shown in this image there is posterior vein of the left ventricle okay so almost all veins they open into the coronary sinus and coronary sinus ultimately opens into the right atrium right and only this anterior cardiac veins they directly open into the right atrium okay now let's cover the applied anatomy of the heart so angina pectoris and myocardial infarction we should know we should know the difference between these two angina pectoris means there is an atheromatous plaque in the in interior of the vessel and there there is ischemia because of this okay and whereas myocardial infarction means the vessel is completely blocked so the heart attack which is uh, commonly referred also referred to as myocardial infarction in which the vessel is completely blocked okay and in angina pectoris the vessel is partially obstructed so this is one difference we should know between angina and myocardial infarction so angina pectoris pain occurs on exertion okay whenever there is increased exertion or the person walks for too far so so that causes difficulty and myocardial infarction may occur suddenly okay so suddenly something may come and block the blood vessel and it may lead to myocardial infarction then so if this occurs myocardial infarction so there are corrective measures which are include which are called as coronary bypass surgery or angioplasty bypass surgery means for example there is a block here a vessel is bypassed from the main trunk okay from main trunk is ascending aorta from there itself a vessel may be bypassed to the part of the heart distal to the block okay that is referred to as bypass and angioplasty means for example there is a block here so a stent will be passed here this block will be removed and the stent will be placed here permanently like this okay and the blood will be able to flow through the stent that is referred to as angioplasty okay so we should know the difference between bypass surgery and angioplasty okay then valvular stenosis so there are multiple valves right tricuspid bicuspid then the semilunar valves so those valves may get stenosed like mitral stenosis or tricuspid stenosis and the respective symptoms may be according to that okay so let's summarize what we have covered in this particular session we covered the external features of the lung then how to determine the side of the lung by three dimensions 
then i covered various relations of the lung then hilum of the lung the various structures forming that difference between the hilum and the root of the lung then we covered the bronchopulmonary segments with its supplied anatomy and in heart we learnt about the exterior interior the arteries supplying it the veins draining the heart and lastly the applied anatomy okay so for pdf handout of this particular session you all can whatsapp me at this number and please do watch other sessions of this youtube channel okay thank you